own times. Welcome to Intuitive Transformations with your host, Sylvia Henderson, and discover tools, wisdom, and inspiration that will empower you to transform your life. Sylvia is an intuitive life coach and energy healer with a growing practice that is focused on empowering others to be more of who they want to be. For the next hour, join Sylvia and explore and unravel anything in the way of you creating the life that you would love to live on the Ohm Times Radio Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Intuitive Transformations radio show, where you will find tools you can use to transform your life right here on Ohm Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. I'm Sylvia Henderson, your host, and I'm here every Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on iom.fm on your, in your Internet browser. Um, Intuitive Transformations is about creating connections, soul to soul, and sharing valuable information and resources that will inspire you to expand into more of who you truly are so that you can step more boldly into what you love and desire to receive and experience in your life. And there is no better place to connect soul to soul than right here on Ohm Times Radio where you can find a wide variety of consciousness-based programs and consciously selected music for your listening pleasure seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And of course, if you'd like to raise your consciousness on a deeper and more personal level and create real change in your life, contact me for a complimentary 15-minute consultation and discover firsthand how I can help you transform your life and how you can experience Experience the change that you have been waiting for. Just visit my website at intuitivetransformations.net. That's intuitive transformations, just like the name of the radio show, dot net. And while you are there, please be sure to like me on Facebook and also follow me on Twitter. You'll get weekly reminders about the show and you'll get a sneak peek at who will be joining me on future shows to come. Now, as someone who provides healing work, I am always interested in learning all that I can about how to help others and, yes, even how to help myself step into more health, wholeness, and well-being, whether it's mentally, emotionally, spiritually, or physically. I happen to be an avid reader, which is one of the reasons I love having authors join me here on my show. And uh, it is important to me that my guests reflect my core values, come from a place of integrity, have a desire to help others, and really have something beneficial to offer that will help you to improve the lives, the life that you are living. And if you have been listening to my show for a while, or if you have worked with me privately, then you know I believe that the root cause of just about every problem we experience has to do with the quality of the beliefs we hold within our mind. About a year ago, I was scanning the bookshelves at a well-known bookstore called East West Bookshop in Seattle, Washington, not too far from where I live in Kirkland, Washington. And there was this one book that really drew my attention and pretty much jumped out at me. That book was... Secrets of Aboriginal Healing, A Physicist's Journey with a Remote Australian Tribe. I purchased the book and I enjoyed reading it immensely. This book, Secrets of Aboriginal Healing, offers an amazing account of Dr. Gary Holtz's personal healing journey, which began in a wheelchair with a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis and a death sentence from his doctors of just two years to live. Shortly after receiving this grim prognosis, Dr. Holtz was living with a remote Aboriginal tribe in Australia, receiving some very deep healing, physical and emotional, and cleansing, which healed his body, and at the end of his stay with this tribe, Dr. Holtz was able to leave his wheelchair and actually walk onto the airplane that carried him back home to Washington State. 
Dr. Gary Holtz then became an amazing healer. Using what he learned from the Aboriginal people of Australia, he found true love, and he happily outlived his doctor's prognosis by 11 years. Well, joining me today is a very special woman. She is the she was the wife and is and was the love of Dr. Gary Holtz's life and she is the co-author of that book that practically jumped off the shelf into my hands called Secrets of Aboriginal Healing and her name is Robbie Holtz. Robbie is here to talk about Gary's experiences and her experiences with the Aboriginal people of Australia and to discuss her brand new book, Aboriginal Secrets of Awakening, A Journey of Healing and Spirituality with a Remote Australian Tribe. Robbie Holtz is an international speaker and holistic wellness consultant living in the Seattle, Washington area. Again, not too far from me. (laughs) And as I mentioned with her late husband, Dr. Gary Holtz, Robbie co-authored the award-winning book, Secrets of Aboriginal Healing. Through her global speaking events, private consultations, and popular online self-healing course, Robbie helps others awaken their powerful inner healer so that they can heal faster and stay healed. Robbie, welcome to the show. Thanks, Sylvia. It's really a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it's such a pleasure to have you here with me. I'm so excited to talk about both of your books, really, because I've read them both cover to cover, and I've enjoyed both of them for really different reasons. Uh, Your first book, Secrets of Aboriginal Healing, which you co-authored with your late husband, um, because of the candid look that it provided into some of the foundational healing practices and traditions used within the ancient 60,000-year-old Aboriginal culture that had not been shared before with with many people outside of um, the Aboriginal tribes. And I was in love with your second book, Aboriginal Secrets of Awakening, your new one, because it completed the story that your first book started. But it also interwove this beautiful and heartfelt love story that you shared with your now late husband, Dr. Gary Holtz. So just so I can get all the listeners ramped up, for those listening who have not yet read your first book, Secrets of Aboriginal Healing. Can you please share um, just a little bit more about that book, especially, um, you know, Gary's opportunity to live, how that came about, to live with this ab- this remote Aboriginal tribe, and some of the things he experienced while he lived with them? Sure. Well, you know, he, he was a, uh, Gary was a very brilliant physicist. He was, had invented about 13 different things that had patents, top secrets that were um, patented. He worked for different governments. So he's very much a scientist, very black and white. It, it didn't exist if it couldn't be proven, but he ended up having multiple sclerosis and became a quadriplegic. And at one point the doctors told him that he, he had um, didn't have much time to live. He actually had about six months. And oh, wow. He, yeah, he, that's what was really going on. The doctors told him two years, but the Aborigine said he had about six months. So, you know, he um, went into a jazz bar to kind of soothe his soul, listen to the music after having this really bad news given to him. And he met a naturopathic physician from Australia who said that the remote Aborigines in the outback had remarkable healing gifts and she felt that they could help him. So even though he was a scientist and it didn't make sense, he just followed his heart, his soul, and ignored his logical mind, and he got on a plane and went into the outback. And I think what you probably found interesting, like a lot of other people, is that the Aborigines already knew he was coming, even mm-hmm. though he just discovered about them. They'd already known for four months he was coming and had been preparing for him, because they're so tuned in, they're so tapped into the collective, the grid. Um, I think that they're, the remote Aborigines in the outback are incredibly enlightened and awakened. And so they, he went into the outback, and in less than 10 days' time, he regained feeling in his body, which he hadn't had in seven years. He had been numb from the neck down. 
And he really understood how disease was created, and it totally transformed him. And so he wrote that, started writing that book on the plane ride back. Uh, and as you said, he clumsily supported himself walking down that aisle on, on the airplane. Very different man coming back to the States. But the reason that the Aborigines were willing to give their, they actually knew that they would be giving their healing secrets to this man, to Gary, because they knew that we don't understand how healing works. We really don't appreciate the fact that we're a body, mind, spirit. They're all involved in the healing. Mm -hmm. And so they were telling us that it's kind of like, if, if you just address the physical, it's like picking the top of a dan line. It's going to grow right back again. So they gave their healing secrets to us because this is what the big guy, which is a genderless term for divine or god, goddess, whatever you want to call that, um, because it, the, the big guy had asked them to give their healing secrets to this man because he was a very well-respected physicist uh, globally, and, and so they, he could take it out into the world, which is what he did. So now when you say they gave the healing secrets to him, you know, just so the listeners understand, it's not like it was in a written textbook. It was like almost a download, right? Right. They, you know, this is... They, the Aborigines um, in the outback are the oldest continuous culture. We know they're at least 60,000 years old, much, much older than that. And they have been passing their wisdom down from generation to generation verbally. And so they also, so Gary got to experience it when he was there in the outback with them. And they helped him understand. They had brought in a woman who was part English, part Aboriginal, so that he could communicate to her so she could tell him uh, what these secrets were and how this how this healing worked, and they had been spending four months the in preparation. Yeah, cr trying to come up with metaphors so that he would understand. Wow. Well, I just want to let everyone know that we are coming up on a break in just a few moments. I'm talking with uh, Robbie Holtz, and we are talking about her newest book, Aboriginal Secrets of Awakening, as well as her previous book, Secrets of Aboriginal Healing. Please stay tuned. There's so much more to come. You won't want to miss this. We'll be back right after the break. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know, I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Ohm Times Radio. I'll meet you there. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. The Cutting Edge of Conscious Radio. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. 
Welcome back. This is Sylvia Henderson. You're listening to Intuitive Transformations on Ohm Times Radio. And I have with me here my very special guest, Robbie Holtz. And she is the author of Secrets of, co author of Secrets of Aboriginal Healing and the author of Aboriginal Secrets of Awakening. And before we went into the break, Robbie was sharing a little bit about her late husband's experience. Um, when he was given the opportunity to live in a re- with a remote Aboriginal tribe, and um, that had prepared four months in advance for him to arrive <laughs> before he even knew he was coming, um, and his experiences there. So, um, Robbie, before we went to the break, you were saying that they had brought in another woman, and she, and for really the purpose of creating some metaphors, so that um, Gary would have a frame of reference in in regards to what they were trying to convey. Right. She was part Aboriginal, part English, so she could speak English to him because um, the tribe was telepathic. They didn't speak English. But the man that Gary had contacted, the healer, Ray, had an apartment in Brisbane, so he knew how... He kind of traversed both worlds. He had grown children who were living in the Brisbane area, so that's why he had a telephone in Brisbane, and that's who Gary contacted. But... Ray knew English, and so did this woman who was part Aboriginal, but the rest of the tribe was totally telepathic. Um, so it was a very interesting environment for Gary to be in, immersed in it, especially as this skeptical scientist. So yeah, we're talking about a physicist, not a quantum physicist, but a... <laughs> <laughs> Big exactly. Quite a different animal. So, okay, in your second book, Aboriginal Secrets of Awakening, you provide a number of examples of Gary's remarkable um, healing abilities. Um, can you share a couple of those stories? And then also, how long did it take after he returned from Australia for him to really step into that role and really realize that, yes, okay, my body's better, but do I really have this ability to help others? Good question. Well, when he was in the outback with the Aborigines, they stopped the MS. He he no longer had MS. He just had to deal with the effects of having been in a wheelchair um, and having had that damage from MS for over 20 years. Mm. But he came back so on fire with what he had learned from the Aborigines that he decided to get a doctorate degree in immunology so he could use what they had taught him in a practice. And he would do what you would call psychoneuroimmunology, which is the mind affecting the immune system. And I think it's so interesting, Sylvia, that what the Aborigines have known for so long, science is just starting to wake up to it. You know, you can call it quantum physics, you can call it all kinds of things, but the Aborigines have been practicing so much of this for so long. So he got his doctorate degree in immunology and started practicing immediately what the Aborigines had taught him. And as he opened up more and more to his gifts and abilities, uh, it was really kind of remarkable what he was able to do. And we found ourselves, um, I met him, he went into the Outback in 94, I met him in 2001. And he was actually a pretty remarkable healer at that point. And when he healed my sister of an incurable disease, um, that's when I fell in love with him. And uh, he swept me off my feet with that kind gesture to heal one of my sisters. So I witnessed so many remarkable things with him. We were healing. He was uh, working on people. And the first thing we always asked, and you know this as a healer, um, is are we supposed to help? Are we supposed to intervene? Because the soul plays a, a role in what happens to people. And, and so rarely with children were we allowed to assist. They had deliberately come in that way for their soul's particular journey. But I love how we were able to help a few times with children. And, and one of my the most endearing one is the one in the book about the little, uh, the little child who was born um, prematurely and didn't have eyesight. Um, right. That was one of my favorites. Where this child, uh, the grandparent had come to us and asked to assist because it, this child was born prematurely and its eyes had not been developed and they were rolling mm-hmm. in their head. It just not even together. They were just kind of, and it was really kind of alarming to watch. And the child had no idea. So. Uh, when we would go back to visit my family in the Midwest, people knew about him, and we ended up staying for weeks back in the Midwest. We would rent a hotel room, a couple suites to help people as, as much as we could while we were back there, and that's how this little child came to us. And so 
yeah, I love that we were able to put that story in the book, um, Aboriginal Secrets of Awakening, because it talks about this little child not quite ready to get vision yet. And so Gary was able to get those eyes to suddenly become connected. They hadn't been connected before. And so now he looked normal, his child looked normal. And then his next um, intention was to get the vision to come through. And he just knew that something was blocking that vision from coming through. And it was because this little child was afraid that if the vision was regained, that he would have to play by himself because we asked. What would oh, be? that's right. I remember reading that. Yeah. And he said, I'd, I'd be by myself because he was just this little, I think, four-year-old child. And he always had a companion with him because he was blind. So I think he was just concerned that if he could see, he would be by himself. And so that's why he was kind of holding the vision from coming through. So there's, there's, you got to pay attention to what the subconscious is, you know, um, holding back vision. So that was a really interesting Lesson. That's so insightful because I see that with some people that they're very t- their sense of identity can be tied to their illness. It's almost like who will I be without this? Exactly. Especially if it's something that's been long term and chronic. Yeah, exactly. And that's the first step that the Aborigines have given of their five steps. That uh, the first step is are you willing? Because some people, like you said, may not be willing subconsciously to let go of that identity or there may be some secondary gains from being sick. So yeah, that's the first question you need to ask is, are you willing, willing to make some changes? Beautiful. So I also noticed in the book that people um, came in a number of times. It was not necessarily that they would see Gary once and then they'd walk away. I'm completely healed. They would come back several times. So I'm just, and I see this with, um, some of the people in my practice, and I'm sure you've seen it with other people. So did Gary ever share with you his point of view of why people don't necessarily heal instantly after just one session? Because people coming in, when they go to a healer, they have this expectation that's a little unrealistic, that something that took years for them to develop, and that they've probably sat in for a while now, that somebody can, and and it's not that that doesn't happen, but it's not the norm, right? Right. That's right. You know, people it, sometimes, and that's what the Aborigines were helping us to understand, is there's an emotional core always, and you've got to get to that emotional root. And that may be a belief system that they've had for a long time and had plenty of time to develop um, a different response. I mean, your cells will respond differently depending on the emotion. For instance, and Dr. Emoto showed us in his water experiments, if you have guilt, um, it creates a different cell and it, it doesn't hold as much life force. It's very dense and heavy and sticky and it creates a lower vibration, not as much vibrance. It's, uh, it, it will slow down the chakras and block things. And so you have to pay attention to if you have that guilt running in the background, which I quite honestly have. Because I was raised Catholic. Very oh, Catholic. you know, I was reading your story and I'm like, oh my God, I was raised Catholic too, you know. <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's like autopilot. I don't even know it's there. It's just kind of my default mode. And so I had to pay attention to that because it's creating a different cell that's not very healthy. And if you do it long enough, it creates a really toxic environment. And I, I remember that Gary would spend a lot of time clearing a lot of this stuff out of the way and then be able to bring in a different a life force or a healing but it took a lot of time to clear out the old stuff so yeah everybody's different but that i thought that was interesting people think that you just immediately send the healing force well they can't because these cells are holding on to this dense compacted emotion that doesn't have as much room and for this light force and so you've got to clear a lot of that out and that's what the Secrets of Aboriginal Healing talks about is paying attention to what kind of cells are you creating because gratitude is a whole different cell yeah. um, and it creates uh, it, I mean if you want to heal faster then really immerse yourself in genuine gratitude as often as possible because it's a higher vibration it holds a lot of this really beautiful life force and disease can't sustain in that high vibration whereas this low vibrational stuff is like a swampy perfect breeding ground for disease. So that's one of the steps is actually the second step is become aware of what kind of emotions are you creating because it's affecting the body and paying attention to what have you been doing. 
You know, I love that you've shared these first two steps, you know, are you willing and become aware. So what are the other three steps that maybe you can share with the listeners? Sure. Well, the second step, like I said, is awareness. Why is this here? It, because the, the physical disease is simply a messenger. It's letting you know that you've immersed in too much of uh, emotions that are not healthy. And so you have the third step is acceptance. It's just you may not like it, but it's here to teach you and help you grow. So just for for instance, my case, I, I was a bit of an overachiever. I created fibromyalgia, which is through the entire system. Mm-hmm. It's not let, let's let's involve all the chakras. Why just why just <laughs> you know, just one? And and uh, also I had. Um, that when I delivered my son back in 85, I got a blood transfusion uh, with hepatitis C. They didn't, they didn't even have a name for it. They called it non-A, non-B. And the hepatitis almost killed me, and then the experimental treatment they put me on almost killed me. So I had to go out and find answers and heal that. And I've, I've healed all of that. I've healed the fibromyalgia and the chronic fatigue syndrome and the hepatitis C because it put me on this path of teaching other people that you are a very powerful healer and creator. You have to pay attention to where are you blocking that healing and how have you been creating it? So even though you can say, well, a blood transfusion, how is there an emotional core to that? Again, it's that body, mind, spirit. My spirit wanted me to go through that experience so that I would heal it when Western medicine didn't have any answers and discover that I could heal it. And that's Really, Sylvia, one of the messages I really love our listeners to get is that they have the ability to heal this stuff. Most of us are not supposed to be sick. Uh, it's just that our bodies are crumbling under the emotional weight. And so it's um, there's tremendous hope for, for really a lot of people that they, they have the ability to heal it. Just because Western medicine doesn't know the answers doesn't mean that there's not tremendous help and that you won't find it. I, you know, I could not agree with you more. I mean, absolutely. I think that dis-ease is, you know, it's dis-ease. It's the lack of ease that we feel first emotionally. And, you know, we are in the society where we're told to ignore emotions and to not feel. And so we've got to step out of that because it's keeping us in illness. Um, so I just want to remind everyone that I have... Um, uh, Robbie Holtz here with me today and we are talking about her um, two books um, Secrets of Aboriginal Healing as well as Aboriginal Secrets of Awakening and her experience as well as her late husband's experience with um, the Aboriginal people of Australia out in the outback so please stay tuned we're going into another break we'll be back in just a few moments you want to continue listening to this show it's just going to get better from here stay tuned The best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Radio Namaste leads you down the yellow brick road into portals of consciousness with the blue collar goddess as your host. Interviews with humans who could be famous or just popular and answers to everything are on the agenda. Tune into Ohm Times Radio and drop in on Thursdays at 3 Eastern. It's a different brand of enlightenment. Live with Medium Lisa Phoenix, mediumship messages and musings, explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your hosts on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? 
Connect with the counselors at Om Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Om Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Welcome back. This is Sylvia Henderson on Intuitive Transformations here with Robbie Holtz, my very special guest. And we are having a wonderful conversation about healing and the people of um, the Australian outback, the indigenous people, the aborigines who have been around, they estimate about at least 60,000 years. This is a very ancient culture and their healing techniques and how it has touched um, not only her late husband's life, but also Robbie's life. We're going to hear about that a little bit later in the show. So, Robbie, you were just sharing the um, the first three of the five um, healing components or steps. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know... I think that what I love that it's outlined in that Secrets of Aboriginal Healing so that people can really get it and understand it and apply it to their lives. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 very simple. And the Aborigines will tell you it's always simple. Our minds just love to complicate things. We're really good at that. So aren't we though? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so as I was explaining, the third of the five steps is acceptance. You may not like the challenge that you have, but it's very deliberate uh, for your path and as Gary discovered that some of the most painful experiences are some of our best teachers and you know you and I know and the listeners know that we are etheric spirits currently in a body and we have this beautiful planet to help us grow and experience and so these some of the most challenging experiences are some of the the best tools to teach us and to move us and to actually shake us out of this mindset that we have, these belief systems that aren't really true, that serve us, that don't serve us, so and that are affecting the body, and that's what the Aborigines know. So the third step, or the fourth step that they've given us is empowerment. Um, Take back your power. If I had believed what the doctors told me, which was that hepatitis C was incurable, I really don't think I would survive. I think I would, I, I, I really, I am, it's been 30 years and I have healed what they said was incurable and that's not uncommon. People have the ability to do that sort of thing all the time because science only knows what it knows. Right. And they're only usually addressing the physical rather than, you know, what's the, the spirits component and what's the emotional component. So I had to take my illness into my own hands and when people came to us and and come to me now and came to Gary and I we let them know quite clearly you need to be responsible for this it's not like you're going to hand over your check or your money or your insurance card and say fix me this is a we're working together on this take back your power and realize that you have the ability to heal this and we're going to help you and I think one of my favorite things to talk about Sylvia is engaging in assistance from the other side of the veil um, you know, it's funny how Gary went into the outback and discovered that there's a lot of gray that can't be proven or explained, really, but it, it still exists. And one of those biggest um, awakenings for him was recognizing he had a, a, an, an angel by his side all the time, a spirit guide named Julie. That was huge for him. And so he was working with Julie, and that's why I think his healing gifts were so amazing was because he was able to work with this a powerful, um, loving spirit guide who would work through him. He was mm. a very humble conduit. And he was able to really focus. And he could see her lasering off tumors, so to speak. He really knew how, the power of the focused mind. And actually, that just shifts right into the, um, the fifth step, which is focus. So, but before I leave the fourth one, empowerment, also recognize that there's tremendous assistance available from the other side of the veil. And that's one of the things that I love helping people recognize is how to tap into that assistance because it's always there for us. We were never designed to be doing this alone. There's tremendous help. And it's so funny how people will ask their guardian angels 
for parking spaces or there's a parking space angel but it's like well why wouldn't you ask for anything else they always respond Mm -hmm. so they can help you heal all the information to heal you can access within you and then you can ask for assistance from this higher consciousness this spirit guide or whatever that means to you to assist so as I briefly touched on the last one is uh, the last healing step is focus focus only on what you want and I think a lot of people are unconsciously giving a lot of focus and energy to what they don't want and that's uh, and that's what the aborigines will tell us is that we don't really use our subconscious minds to any degree we civilize tribes and we are sort of surprised at what happens because we're really not paying attention we're on on autopilot whereas the aborigines at a very young age about three or four start we could call it meditating but they go into dream time and they spend the aborigines spend more than half of their time in dream time and they'll tell you that that is more real than what this what we call reality this illusion really and they're actively creating that's quantum physics they're actively creating what they want so you could actively create a healthy body by getting into this higher consciousness and start uh, accessing the information that's available to you it's all there within you and then um, start focusing on a healthy body rather than focusing on the disease or focusing on the, the pain you know, I, I told again, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, we really do tend to focus on what we don't want. We know that very clearly. If you ask someone what they want, they're kind of dumbstruck. They're not sure how to answer that question because so much time is being spent on what they don't want. And um, I find it interesting that you kind of um, said a little bit about dream time and meditation. Um kind of alluding that they're similar but are they similar or are they different well i mean there is a difference but i I think for our audience today the best way to describe it is just simply meditation where you're unplugging from the mind and this is what the aborigines are so good at they unplug from this very chatty mind very fear-based negative mind and they plug into this greater consciousness this higher consciousness Mm. and they spend a lot of time doing that and you can imagine the difference when you're plugging into this more loving, higher consciousness than this, our mind, that's where we really get into trouble is our minds really kind of run us. Um, and they're doing it without us really being aware of it. So that's one of the first things you do is you start becoming aware of what the mind is feeding you. Step back and observe it. And, you know, you could even ask, well, whose voice is that? Is it the collective? Is it my my mother's voice telling me that, this scared inner child, and you don't let it just run rampant. You start having an awareness, and then you let it go. It, it, is, it can be that simple. Don't let your mind tell you otherwise. It is simply that simple. And shifting it over into a different role where that mind is supporting you rather than in charge. That's the way it was designed. It was designed to be a very powerful tool, but for many of us on the planet, and you can see it worldwide, Oh yeah, we're in charge. Absolutely. I mean, and a lot of it is because, you know, no, well, I'm not going to say no one teaches it, but as little ones, we don't learn this typically. I mean, it's a rare child that's raised in a home that comes from that point of view. Um, typically, children are taught to not feel good about themselves and to focus on what they're doing wrong, um, sadly, instead of what they're doing right and what's so beautiful about them. Um, you know, in your book, this last one, I mean, it was such a beautiful love story. I'm, I'm reading through the pages going, oh, you know, <laughs> just the most romantic things that um, Gary would do for you. I mean, did you ever in your wildest imagination believe that you would experience such a beautiful and magical love relationship like that? No, no. And, and honestly, I did not think that it was going to come in the form of a man uh, in a wheelchair. He mm. was in a wheelchair when I met him in 2001. He was able to pretty, uh, he was at a high functional rate. I mean, he lived on his own and he came dressed to work in these beautiful Italian suits and, you know, he could uh, drive himself to work and everything. But um, it's just, you know, that's what love, I, I seriously, when he healed my sister of an incurable disease in four days, somebody flipped the switch. I instantly <laughs> fell in love with this man. And he had already sort of known something was going on because the first from the moment he met you right yeah which was the fourth of july interestingly enough um all the past lives flashed across my face which i didn't know that for a couple years he didn't tell me he he said it really freaked him out he'd never had that experience 
So he was pursuing me, but I wasn't having any part of it until he healed my sister. And then I just, wow, I just knew we would be together forever. Yeah. I, I, we I, still I, are. We still are. I know. Right? I know. If, if Listeners, make sure you buy this book and you'll see. <laughs> they really still are. Yeah. So, um, Robbie, you were also, um, after Gary's transition, you were invited to the Australian Outback by a group of Aboriginal women who believed that it was time to allow some of their most sacred ceremonies to be shared with outsiders, in particular um, with white women, including yourself. And they invited you to participate with them in sacred ceremonies at one of their most sacred places. And I know from reading your book that you're not allowed to share the details of those ceremonies or of any other actual rituals. But I would like to know, you know, how did that experience change you? Oh, my gosh. That's a loaded question, Sylvia. It changed me in so many ways. Um, you know, you got to remember, again, that these Aborigines in the outback, the remote ones, are operating a really high frequency. They're already operating it in very awakened, enlightened states. Um, that's why I love their wisdom. What do they have to tell us? Because they know where we're sort of creating problems and how to rectify it. So... Uh, I think that, you know, being in that outback, and of course we were around Uluru, Ayers Rock, which is a really strong vortex of energy. It's a very sacred site, very strong uh, energy there. We um, were creating these uh, powerful ceremonies that actually created really powerful thunderstorms that they hadn't seen in years around that area. They said that the white women's energy added to that Mm-hmm. higher vibrational environment and created these powerful thunderstorms that just kept circling the camp. It was quite amazing. But being around this uh, the higher vibrational um, environment with these women and children, you just saw things differently. I mean, you, it's kind of like we both, we all know intellectually that we're one. We yeah. all know that we are, but, but being in that environment, you could feel it. Wow. You could feel, you know that Mother Earth loves you tremendously, but being around those, that tribe, I could feel it just to the point of tears. So, yeah, so many things that they that they imparted to me. That is absolutely amazing. I can't imagine what it would feel like to have such a palpable connection with Mother Earth in that way, especially coming through the vibration that I'm sure that they set in place with their ceremonies and rituals. And um, what I would like to do is, as we prepare to go into the break, when we come back, I'd like you to talk about that a little bit more. And I'd also like you to talk a little bit about um, what you do now in your healing work and how you help people connect to their guidance. So we're going into another break. And so please stay with me. I have Robbie Holtz here. This is Sylvia Henderson on Intuitive Transformations. We'll be right back in just a few moments. Stay tuned. Conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Welcome to the gathering around my kitchen table on Equilarium FM, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join my guests as we integrate spirituality into everyday reality with vibrant conversations, inspired interviews, and my latest channeled guidance to inspire and brighten your day. I'm Claire Johnson, and together we'll be raising vibrations across the nations. to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. 
Home Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Welcome back again. This is Sylvia Henderson on Intuitive Transformations. And before we went into the break, um, Robbie was sharing a little bit about her experience out in her own personal experience out in the Australian outback with a group of um, these beautiful um, indigenous women in Australia uh, known as the Aborigines who um, had invited her as well as um, a handful of other women to um, participate and the sacred ceremonies and actually to be imbued with the um, ability to um, come back and help transform the lives of others. So, Robbie, can you share a little bit about how that opened uh, the door for you to step into your role as a holistic wellness consultant? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question because that's exactly what, what happened. Um, you know, the Aborigines, again, were... I think they were kind of, um, you could call it upgrading our system, uh, giving us new software by raising our vibration. And I could see when I woke up during the middle of the night on my in my third eye, I could see these hieroglyphics that were Aboriginal, and I just knew some reprogramming was going on that was going to benefit us. And the last day when I was getting ready to board the Jeep to take us out of that area, the I mean, literally minutes before, I realized that this was all part of Gary saying goodbye. He had passed a year earlier, and it was a way of him passing the baton. Uh, He was always such a tremendous healer that I always felt like I was just sort of supporting him, but not really taking on the role. And I realized in that outback, he was passing the baton on, that the Aborigines wanted me to continue teaching their healing secrets and helping people worldwide. And so that became very clear to me. And also, as I mentioned, Gary continues to work with me. He's just helping from the other side of the veil. So he's part of my beautiful healing team. And I know the Aborigines sometimes will step in from the other side of the veil to assist in healing. I tell people, just give me one hour. That is all I need with you to change your life and rock your world. Wow. Because what I do, it's, it's really about getting this information out to people and helping them learn how to do it themselves. And then they can you know, heal themselves and then teach other people how to do it as well. This is how we're going to make a difference in the world. So one hour is all I need. Um, I get in for, I work with this beautiful healing team of which Gary is a part of that team. And sometimes the Aborigines, they will help me understand what that particular person's emotional core is, their emotional root, so that we have an awareness. They also help us, they assist before, you know, during the uh, consultation and, of course, before and after because they're invited in to help heal this and help release it and let go of it and understand why it was here and no longer need it. And, and also, I think one of the things that I really, really makes a difference for people is I teach them how to work with their, they have their own team on the other side and how to really access that because we're making life much harder than it needs to be. We don't need to be putting up so much struggle or it doesn't need to be so painful and again, most of us aren't supposed to be getting sick. So I teach them in that hour not only how to heal themselves and how to get their mind on board, not sabotaging, but actually working with them and being the powerful tool it's designed to be, but also really how to tap into this tremendous assistance. And some of that information um, is up there on my website, holeswellness.com, H-O-L-Z, as in zebra, wellness.com, in the blog section. We've tried to keep information up there all the time to help people. My passion is getting this information out there, helping people heal, and then they can do what they're here to do because as you know, Sylvia, and you're doing a beautiful job, it's about waking up and it's kind of a one-by-one basis. As one person wakes up, it makes it easier for the next person to wake up. So yeah, let's let's get your mind out of the way and um, you know help you recognize what you're here to do. It was an amazing time. I love that because that really is in alignment with the fourth healing step, which is empowerment. You're giving people back their power 
by teaching them how to connect with their own guidance um, because you know to be honest we do live in a society and it's not to say that there's anything wrong with looking for help because I think we need a jumping off place uh, where to, but there becomes kind of an addiction to help I think sometimes um, so I love that you are empowering people to connect with their guidance through the work that you do and I'm very impressed that it takes one hour because I feel like you've totally blown the whole trajectory of having to come multiple times <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm not a coach. I'm a consultant, and I can just, and that's why I just say it's just so transformational it, because it's going to help you recognize where you've been getting into trouble and how to rectify it and how to do it. And and it's and I and, I, and again, my team on the other side sets my rates, so they keep me very very affordable so that everybody has access to me. But I just know that they beautifully take care of me, and that whoever comes to me. Um, needs to come and since the second book is coming out about Aboriginal Secrets of Awakening it's interesting how I'm getting a lot of people who have told me that okay I'm done playing it small I know that I'm here to do something more and I want to know how to do that so it's like oh my gosh that's my favorite thing to help you with (laughs) oh my goodness I love that I hope that there's a lot of healers listening to this because uh, this is really important if we're going to do the work that we're here to do that we get into a position where we're actually um not only taking care of our clients, but taking care of ourselves as well. Um, Can you, again, just one more time, give people your website. Spell your name again, because I don't know that everybody knows it's (laughs) H-O-L-Z. Yeah, it, I mean, it is pronounced with that T, but it's it's just H-O-L-Z as in zebra. So if they go to holeswellness.com, H-O-L-Z, W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S.com, uh, there's a lot of information on the blog section, especially with how to work with your spirit teams. Um, communicate a lot. They're constantly communicating. They always respond. It's just that a lot of people miss the signs. And so that's probably one of the mo- more popular ones is the section on how to work with your team and be a better team player. It makes a huge difference. And there's also a free abundance meditation they can they can get access to. So they get, there's a lot of helpful information. We really, like I said, our passion is empowering people and recognizing, helping them recognize they're incredibly powerful healers themselves and that the information is there. And that's why people contact me sometimes saying, well, how do I get in touch with the tribe in the outback? Because I have something to heal. And we're like, no, you don't understand. That's why we put all that information. Right. So you don't have to do all of that. (laughs) Exactly. It's right there. And it's in 100 pages. And it's entertaining. So what else do you want? And I have to say, it is very, both books are incredibly entertaining. And I just want to remind the listeners of the titles for both of your books. So the first one, which is... um, Secrets of Aboriginal Healing, a Physicist's Journey, and a oh, with a remote Austra- Australian tribe. And um, just to clarify now, Gary had, you said, written most of the book on the plane ride home. Is that correct? Right. But right. then you finished it after he had transitioned. Right. He, we got so busy with people coming to us that we didn't have time to finish it. So after he passed, I thought in honor of him, I would just get it out just as a gift and had no idea that the Aborigines had placed a lot of healing intention in that book and people were healing. And now it's in over 35 countries all over the world. And it's wow. in different languages because people are resonating to it all over the world. And, and it's very interesting. The Aborigines have made sure that there's a lot of healing in that book and that um, it's, it's just it's just been a trip, Sylvia, watching it. I actually- I, well, I know. I mean, that, it jumped into my hand, literally. I'm not kidding. I'm standing at the bookshelf <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, no, 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 I don't want that book because I'm thinking it's full of rituals or ceremonies and it, that nothing wrong with that. It's just not, I'm drawn more to working with belief systems, working with shifting um You know, the way people think and and working with the mind, the subconscious and the superconscious and clearing that. And so when I picked it up and actually opened it, I was like, oh, my God, (laughs) this is so perfect because I love the things that Rose was 
uh, having Gary say and testing to see, do you, are you really congruent with this? Do you really believe this? Or do you not believe this? What do you really believe? What's in there that's driving your bus? And creating this in your life, and then your your newest book is called um, "Aboriginal Secrets of Awakening: A Journey of Healing and Spirituality with a Remote Australian Tribe." And honestly, folks, I think you need to get both books because they really, to me, it's like volume one and volume two. And I highly encourage you to um, get both of these books. I'm sure they're on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble. Where else can people get? these books they're everywhere i mean i love to support the little bookstores but it's all over yeah beautiful beautiful yeah i highly recommend that everyone gets this so so you know what is it what's the the one thing that you think that um people most need to hear right now with so many things going on in the world that there is kind of this sense of uncertainty we have greece that's kind of about to default on their loan and and there's some um you know murmurings about how that could dismantle the economic system on a global scale and even though we've had these wonderful bright lights last uh week in the united states with marriage equality and obamacare passing through and none of that can ever be switched or changed and the confederate flag coming down in some parts of um the southern parts of the country you know on a global scale we still have you know climate changes. We have a lot of things that are going on that people are scratching their head going, uh, something's not right. And not only that, there's been a lot of energetic shifts. I don't know if you felt them. I have. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, who hasn't, right? Right. I mean, is there anything that you can say just kind of in closing to encourage people listening? Sure. Uh, First of all, you have to recognize that there's no accidents. Nothing is ever random or or misfit. It's all very deliberate. And when things are going smoothly, whether it's in your life or in the world, you're not likely to make any changes. These uh, tremendous contrasts, these huge opportunities provide beautiful opportunities for growth and for uh, tremendous opportunities. So pay attention to what kind of energy are you adding. Are you adding fear or are you adding hope? That's so good. I hope you all heard that. Are you adding fear or are you adding hope? You have a choice every day to choose your thoughts wisely. Robbie Holtz, thank you so much for joining me today. You have been wonderful. This has been a fantastic show. Everyone listening, thank you for tuning in. Please be sure to uh, join me next week. Um, I have another healer joining me. This is one of my mentors. We're going to talk about spiritual response therapy. Um, Same time, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time, every Sunday night. Take care and have